Hello, everyone, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Movie Snack Podcast, the podcast dedicated to reviewing classic movies and tasty snacks. Look, we've all been there before. You're with your bros, you're trying to find out something to do, and someone suggests, hey, let's watch a movie. That's a great idea, except now we have two major problems. What do we watch, and what do we eat? We'll look no further because here at the Movie Snack, we got you covered. We're going to sift through all the gore, the sleaze, the salty and sweet, and everything in between so that you can have a better movie night experience. Don't waste your time sitting around arguing about what to watch or who likes chocolate. No, oh, I don't like things that are, I need gluten-free stuff. Just listen to the Movie Snack Podcast and all your movie snack questions will be answered. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's watch some movies and get fat together. Yes. <laughs> you should, I might as well just you should. You, you should, should do, do that. Do some of those. Right. Well, welcome to the Movie Snack Podcast. Welcome to the Movie Snack Podcast. I am your host, Mike. I'm going to retake that because I got a little wobbly there. <laughs> Welcome to the Movie Snack Podcast. I'm your host, Mike, joined by my co-host, Vinny. What up? And our good friend, Dan. Hello. snack tears all around. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are reviewing Frankenhooker and <laughs> Rice Krispies Treats Cookies and Cream Flavor. <laughs> Let's start by talking about this movie. Frankenhooker, released in 1990. Directed by Frank Henenlotter, maker of Basket Case and Brain Damage. Oh, yeah, baby. It is a horror comedy, clearly about Frank and peoples. And it is really, I thought it was pretty cool. So on the back of the cover, it says, if you only see one movie this year, it should be Frank and Hooker. That's quoted by Bill Murray. And it is the four stars best of 90, meaning 1990 when it came out. And that was said by the very late and not late at all, because he's still alive, <laughs> Joe Bob Riggs. <laughs> oh, wow. Shout out to Joe Bob. Yeah, uh, Joe Bob. You know, Joe B. Who I kind of hate on a little bit, don't I? <laughs> you do. Just we can a talk tad. about that later. Should we? I, maybe we should I address we it sh- now. Sure, you want to get into the it. Joe Bob story? You want to get into the Joe Bob? Well, maybe we'll talk about, just quick. Everyone, you can tell me your opinions on Joe Bob Riggs. Monster Vision is awesome. I loved Monster Vision, right? It word, was great word, word. on TNT all the time. Exposed me to a lot of cool movies early on. But we saw him recently at an Alamo Drafthouse screening of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Mm -hmm. sidebar, great movie. And all he did was like, I think it's like when you see a star who used to be great and now you see them now and you're kind of just like, yeah, he's playing the guitar. Yeah, he's he's singing. Okay, he I, lost. I, I maybe uh, should <laughs> like. When's he gonna get off? Cause he just would not shut up, dude. Yeah. He all he and and I'm not even gonna take him. But like he he lost his charm. I yeah, thought. Yeah, he lost some of his Joe Bob swagger. Like the Joe Bob you see in Monster Vision, like the cool ass Joe Bob. He's just you know he's just old man Joe Bob. He's just happy to be here. Yeah, he was very happy yeah. to be. Here. Oh yeah, very happy to be here. My, my <laughs> I get to see my grandkids every once in a while. I'm just very happy with wearing my shirts. Yeah, they don't call a lot, but, but I mean but they're I probably him. watching monster movies, so him. I get it. You know, they're not really calling a lot, I mean, but. He was a nice. He se- still seemed like a nice dude. He seemed like a much nicer seems dude. Like a good, genuine guy that yeah. really enjoyed his job. Really enjoys the culture. I mean, we're hating on him for being. I'm like, only no, no, hating not on Werb, him. No, yeah, I liked I, him. I, I liked it too, but I enjoyed listening to his story. By the way, he said very funny things. I he was he was funny. He was talking about um, skeletons. There was many. There was skeletons in the movie. He was talking about. Yeah, I don't remember the movie. But he was talking about 100 fake skeletons were used and 100 real skeletons, which is probably not true. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like he And I would appreciate it all up to that. But then I could tell he was just like reading IMDb like trivia things. He and was I'm like, you're, you're like better than this, Joe Bob, man. Like, Come off the cuff a little bit. you Because know? if you watch – I don't know the last time you saw any Monster Vision – but he used to give like an awesome rundown, being like, "This movie's got seven dead hookers, yeah, but two you don't decapitated think... heads, four feet that step in water." Like it's just like and it, a <laughs> yeah, lot of funny great. things. And it was this time it was just like those were like I predetermined. Can read that at home, but yeah. that's those those scripted, like you know. Yeah, scripted. But it was he had five hundred years to prepare for this. He was reading. <laughs> yeah, off I'm of sure the he script. was. I'm sure he was home thinking about when Alamo Drafthouse was going to call else? him. What else? Oh, I'm so- Oh, you're right. <laughs> the world star that is Joe Bob Briggs in 2018. Hey, he's busy, man, okay? He's not that busy. He's goddamn bright. He's not that busy sitting at home and they said, "Hey Joe Bob, you want you want to talk about a movie?" And he's like, "Can it be boring?" And it was like, "Well, shit, yeah, it can." And then they just did it. I didn't appreciate that. 
I, I mean, I don't hate Joe Bob, but yeah, he definitely lost something. So I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm the Switzerland here. Yeah, make on, Joe Bob great one. again is what I'm trying to say right. here. But I anyway, like, let's get, I like let's, you, let's get back into the actual thing we're here to talk about. We love you, Joe which Bob. <laughs> I love you too, Joe Bob. I'm saying it because I love you, man. You cu- get that edge back. Whatever you need, get back. We want you back. Anyway, trans- <laughs> let's <laughs> transition. transition. Let's transition with a perfect smooth segue. So the movie we watched today, Frankenhooker, and like we said, directed by Frank Hennenlauter, the maker of Basket Case and Brain Damage. Uh, we're gonna give our first impressions based on the box. So it has pink, like purple-haired fucking Franken bitch in front of a Times Square subway. So you're telling me there's probably gonna be tits. There were. Oh yeah. There were lots of them. Oh yeah. There's gonna be tits. There's gonna be whores, and it's gonna be in New York, and there's monsters. And then knowing it's Frank Hennenlotter, there's going to be, like, goo and weird monsters. So I, my first impression was I'm, like, fucking sold, man. I'm a huge Frank Hennenlotter fan, so I was very excited to watch this. Um, passing the box over to me. I haven't really looked at the box too much before we watched the movie. Um, it looks cool. Yeah, it tells you right off the bat it's going to be in New York. You're going to have – it's right there in the title, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Looking at the back, there's a picture of her full full body picture of Frank and Hooker. Um, you can see a little brain hooked up to some electrodes, so you know there's some kind of weird sci fi element to it. Um, yeah, judging by the box alone, it's gonna it has be a, great it, shelf it, appeal. It's I think. gonna it does. It's gonna be a cool movie. Yeah. Good box. Shout out to the box that actually talks. Oh you, fuck yeah! I'm when sorry. You press it. I can only, dude. I'm only made like so much money, man. Like I I'm know, already not. Way. I'm already eating like salt sandwiches for a week with you <laughs> know like ice cube soup. About? There's a box. There's, there's a, a big, big box. There's a big box. There's a VHS okay. big box. This is. Oh, let's just stop. This is the regular just yeah, pink. Yeah, we have the regular box. This is just a regular pink box version. But go ahead. But VHS, you know, size of VHS big box, like those ones over there. They're yep. Like this thick and this tall. That one has a sound thing in it. When you press it, it she goes, mm, want a date? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But That's that cool. one costs, like, my future child's whole college yeah. tuition. It's not right, anything well. crazy, but it's like, to find a working one is hard. Your yeah. kid doesn't have to go to college. Yeah, well, fuck him. But imagine that he graduates high school and you're like, son, and he's <laughs> come over here. I never, I want to show you something. I've been saving this <laughs> since you were born for this exact day. 18 years. You're, when I you're die. not going to college. <laughs> Press this button. Well, the battery's dead because it's from 1990. But if you find batteries and replace it on this box, son, it will say, won't a date. <laughs> when I Welcome. die, <laughs> I bequeath to you my formerly talking Frankenhooker box. I've seen some people replace the battery, but it's it's like under paper. So, you know, yeah. like you're I fucking have, uh, playing. You're playing with fire there. I have one. I have a King Kong one that roars, and it's like barely roaring yeah. right now. But I saw someone post about that recently. I know there's that one. There's this one. There's the movie, um, The Dead Pit. If you've ever seen that cover, it has like a raised zombie face and okay. the two eyes glow. And then, um, what is it? Microwave, microwave Ma- Massacre. Yeah, Microwave Massacre has a interactive the light, one. The too. two That's lights. Cool. Just, 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 Maybe one. That one is fucking dough. Man. That one. Yeah, it is. That one, my kid, all my kids can go to college. But uh, <laughs> back to the box. Um, great picture on the front. I mean, artwork-wise, it's definitely a painting of Frankenhooker, but it looks cool. You see Times Square in there. Um, yeah, a lot of good screenshots. Bald guy, loved bald guy. Um, and it just looks looks dope. And it, And let's also not forget that. Times Square on a cover means something different when this came out than Times Square now. Times Square in 1990 was like dirty, filthy cesspool. Maybe it was like starting to swing in like certain neighborhoods, but like Times Square was still like a very like you don't go there with your family. The Simpsons were making fun of it, you know? Yeah. So. Times Square yeah, that's probably right on the, the cusp of when it started to change well, over. What was right? it, Giuliani? Yeah, Giuliani? No, I think it was Koch. This started to, yeah. uh, but then I think maybe maybe Koch started. I think all of the because Times Square used to just be all X-rated movie theaters, right? Yeah, it was sleazy and just super sleazy, just shitty hotels where this dude has filmed most of his movies. Yeah, he has so many great New York movies. Yeah, but yeah, I think early '90s is when they started closing all of the X-rated theaters and stuff like that, and trying to. Was that also around the time Pee Wee Herman got caught? It was definitely maybe because that was like the biggest. I feel like that had something to do with it. But right? he wasn't in Times Square, cult- right? 
I don't know. I mean, I he's a famous guy. No, I don't know. Well, first of all, justice for, Let me fa- justice for justice Pee-wee. For Let's Pee-wee. get that out there. Yeah. Free oh, Pee-wee. my God, dude. Free, Free him Pee-wee. retroactively, dude. The first person, Doc, if you're listening right now, don't go back to save Marty. <laughs> go back to stop the persecution of Pee Wee Herman yeah, dude. right now. Total witch hunt. Yep. So, um, but I don't think Pee Wee was in New York. I think Pee Wee was in L.A. Probably. But, uh, right from first impressions from the movie itself, uh, I've seen it before. I've seen it earlier. This is my second time watching it, and still good, still funny, still had those good parts to it. It's not as much of a horror movie as it is almost like a comedy. Com horror. Com horror. Definitely comedy first. Yeah, and even like the horror was light. I thought. I thought it was yeah. more like there was more science fictiony For parts sure. of it. There was there was very little blood. Yeah, I would say it's kind of like. Um, kind of like a Beetlejuice, actually. Yeah. Like it's in company with that. Where like there's supernatural stuff. There's clearly yeah, supernatural. But anyway, fuck you. There's supernatural <laughs> stuff. There's like there's the creepiness, science. There's, yeah, there's science. There's um, and there's but it's done well and like pretty decent effects and shit too. Yeah. Right. I will disagree with that. I don't think the effects were great. I think the bodies exploding which we i guess we can yeah, get to eventually uh, yeah let's table that for now all yeah, right we'll, we'll table, we'll table it. that <laughs> so as far as the we'll we'll ballpark the plot for you really quick so we don't have the ball let's just take it as it you goes you want to go for it all right we're oh, gonna, why not we're gonna go for it we'll go ahead you tell me you get go ahead and try well, to nutshell it nut- and i'll n- interrupt nutshell, you as i often do nutshell of nut the tree plot. it nut tree it okay yeah a walnut tree it yeah i'll let you start doing it and i'll interrupt i like jeffrey franken I'm gonna see what did, see what they did there. You get that? You get that? You guys fucking get that? You, get that? you stupid idiots! You, oh god, this is highbrow shit. Yeah. <laughs> so Jeff Franken is a failed medical student slash uh, electrical engineer who uh, likes to tinker with bioelectrical, you know, experiments. He's got his boy, the eyeball brain, in a jar that he brought to a picnic. They never got that any further. Was that, that just was a, a pet? That was its that was its grenade rat. That was this movie's <laughs> grenade rat. <laughs> eye brains. Yeah, just eye brain. So he's got eye, bo- eye brain in a jar, and he's messing with it at the family picnic. And uh, they introduce his fiance, uh, Elizabeth, mm-hmm. uh, who's wearing one of the worst fat suits I've ever seen. I don't think it was supposed to be a fat suit. I think it was they fat bought pants? her larger clothes and like, yeah, stuffed like she pillows just looks in them, like, like an attractive girl. And it was only in her bottom half. That's why I think you could tell. Yeah. It was just yeah. like she's really hot. the only the only way you could know that she's supposed to be somewhat unattractive is because they tell you. Was it? Yeah, I actually didn't. Well, they pick up on that because it wasn't sold they, that they hard. They just tell her, you know, I'm. S- she just says, I'm too fat. Yeah. And well, then, she was, like, talking about her mom complaining. Like, oh, Jeffrey's all, like, he won't go to medical school, and I'm so fat. They all have really thick New Jersey accents, by the way. Oh, yeah. So, on, and she's just chowing down on pretzels the whole time. She's trying to talk to her friend. But, yeah, it was, like, pillow pants. Yeah, definitely. Like, they <laughs> yeah. literally just sewed a pillow into the pants, and then she had, like, the late 80s, early 90s shoulder pad drape top. Why do you think they had to do that? Because I'm looking back at that now, like, you don't have to be ugly to be turned into a Frankenstein. No. Well, they made it seem like it was like part of him trying to find the perfect body hmm. for when, spoiler alert, uh, she dies yeah. in the first like five <laughs> minutes by a, um, a remote self-driving control. Yeah. remote control lawnmower that Jeffrey creates for her father for some for his birthday, I guess, and she ends up getting run over by the lawnmower, but they don't really show anything, but some body parts. So that's it. what sets the stage yeah. for her having to be a Frankenhooker. Yeah, but to your point, um, it wouldn't matter if she was fat anyway because her body got mutilated. Yeah, exactly. So, so I don't know why they play, put that in. I Maybe it was know. just like appreciation for fat. Bitches. Somebody in the somebody <laughs> in the writers' know. room was like, "This is it. This is this is the key here to this movie." Yeah, Pillow pants, all about it. But uh, Jeffrey decides to uh, toil over um, some schematics and try to figure out a way to bring back uh, Elizabeth any way he can. Hence the Franken part of the Franken hooker. His name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Clever. Yep. So um, whole movie really revolves around him trying to. You know, figure out a way to get body parts to build a body for Elizabeth's head that he has in some tank filled with purple, like great yeah, preservative, yeah, <laughs> purple Kool Aid that he's got. Keeps in. everything fresh. It's bubbling though, yeah. so that's how you know it's, it's working. Yeah, science. Yeah, 
So yeah, there's a good amount of like to, as like play scientists there they did do all the right things that look yeah. like science yep. yeah. there's steam coming out of beakers there's different colored liquids and yeah. glasses that's and, all you know, i know about science yeah that's the basically all science is yeah. to make different color stuff yeah. <laughs> curly tubes color color coded um beakers and stuff mm-hmm. with red blue and green yeah. all with the dry ice budget on this movie was very big very high very high dry ice budget um but yeah, he's just trying to find, you know, he's just trying to find the perfect body for Elizabeth. He's going over these schematics. He's just kind of like hanging out in his room day and night, just starting to lose his mind a little bit trying to figure this out. And he, we go on the wild adventure that is Frankenhooker. Yeah. Is that, I thought it was pretty awesome. From I mean, I know if my wife dies, what? I would also look for a very, very hot prostitute to build her body out. Oh, yeah. Which is, <laughs> which is what he ended up doing. And that was like, that's what, because it, like he was saying, it did start in New Jersey, but then he's like, did they ever explain why he's like, he never got like a weird sexual thing. It was just like, it makes sense. Like, no, he just wants his wife back. Yeah, if you're rebuilding your wife, you want like hot fucking tits and a perfect well, ass. Well, that's what I think. And he's kind of just like, fuck it, man. Like, let's do it. That's what I think the like skirt around was from her being fat. Like, oh, she didn't oh. like that she was fat. So I'm going to make her not fat. Her Let me give her the perfect, perfect body. body. Ah. I get, there you go. We'll there you out. go. So I think that was like the whole deal with the fat suit and all that kind of stuff. But, but what? Okay. So that brings us to where he goes to in New York. I guess we won't spoil too much. Yeah, I don't but, know. I don't know how deep you want to get into that. I don't know how how the fathoms. Well, we don't. Ha- I guess we'll end up talking about it. So basically, after she's dead, he makes the conscious decision that hey, I'm gonna bring her. Oh, that's it. There's an there's a coming storm. So now oh, he yeah. finally has the electrical capacity to even like attempt to bring her back. Right. So before that, he has to go find the fucking right fucking hooker, and he goes to New York. And this was, this is what I guess we can segue from here into the parts of the movie that we did like. Because it's almost like a tale of two halves. Yeah. And the pre Frank and Girl stuff is like kind of a mixed bag, I thought. And it, but it starts, the movie really starts to pick up when he starts to go look for the prostitutes, I thought. Well, because most of the beginning of the movie is just him talking to himself in his room. It's yeah. just him. He's, it's like a solo yeah, there, there monologue. There was no script. No. There was, there was an idea or a feeling of this scene. And then go, wouldn't you say, Dan? Uh, yeah. I, I think it took a little too long to get moving i would have liked them you know the to to get to the hooker hunt earlier and yeah. get in and get to frankenhooker sooner yeah there should have been more frankenhooker it was like the last 30 last 20 i was paying attention yeah so and i totally agree if there was like critiques i had it would be that i, I get why he did it because in the very early parts of just talking about his name is Jeffrey, right? Jeffrey. Yeah. 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 Talking about him, he like you did feel like in a the weird Frank Henenlotter way that like oh he does care about her and it's done in like a funny way, but it was that part was like y- that's not what you want to do in this movie is kind of like build up the like the emotional like impact of like what he's really trying to do. They should have just got to the fucking hooking yeah. way quicker. Yeah. So eventually they do get to it, oh. which is when I actually really started enjoying the movie. And the hooking probably is like halfway through. Yeah, halfway. Right? He get he gets yeah. into New York and he's driving around looking for hookers, the the hottest ones he could find because he wants to make the perfect body for his wife. Yeah. And he gets what does he say? Six or seven? Something seven. like that. Like a party. He gets a he gets yeah. a hooker party. This is where the comedy really came in. I thought because he oh, yeah. he did play this where he was just like, oh my god, and he was just like the do- there's a scene where he's just like taking measurements of these girls parts and he's like you see him like m- tape measuring boobs and yeah, shit. yeah that was good it this was very very oh, no. funny well look at this and one. plenty oh. of fucking boobs like that was also yeah. like when they fucking came man the fucking oh, rain yeah, came, they came down yeah. oh yeah they did yep so there was a lot of boobs in this movie yeah. big boobs Round boobs, all, so, all shapes, banana flappers, boobs, flappers, yeah. swingers, flappers, all kinds. gobbers, yeah, Danglers, multicultural Asian bobbers. tits, black tits, white tits. Oh yeah, we had the whole. Um, and they, there was babes in this movie. They're legit. Were they didn't just find like they were. It was all filmed on the real like dirty hooker streets of New York, but they were not like those hookers. And if they were like, I wish I was alive. No, they found time, some. Man. They were fucking. They found smoking. some attractive girls for this movie, and they got those boomies out. <laughs> yes, they did. Uh. Which I I uh, I like. 
No, it was yeah. Good. There was enough of them. That yeah. was definitely the number one scene in the whole. Yeah, movie. so he brings him to a, ho- a scummy hotel room, yep. and he is unbeknownst to them, he, they don't understand the reason why they 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 think he's just there for a party. They, they think, think they he's there for some type of party, and he's, he's just measuring he's measuring their boobs, their butts. He's picking which ones he likes. Yeah, a lot of great sight gags in this. And they kind of get fed up, and they start asking for the money. And he uh, eventually goes, listen, I don't know if I can um, follow through with this. So they well, they grab the, the purse that he has. You, the, you ba- I'm going gonna, I'm to back you up a second. Because the, <laughs> <reason, laughs> the reason why... So he's trying to find hookers to, uh, to bring back, you know, to cut up for parts, to bring back his wife. So in order to kill the hookers... He makes super crack. I was getting oh, that, dude. Bud. You, yeah, you just spoiled super crack. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta pre-do the super crack, man, dude. That, so because he, that he was like, he wasn't sure if he wanted to kill the hookers or not. That's yeah. He was just like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if right. I can kill. He's the a hookers. good dude. Like, he has a he has a pretty decent moral compass. He doesn't yeah. feel good about this. I just have to kill one stupid hooker. <laughs> but I mean, she has well, to here's die. Here's what I think he could have done, which is not Frankenstein. Just at smoked all. all the crack. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Could have just gotten really high on crack and blown his brains out yep. and then problem solved. But um, he could have just found one really hot hooker and just put his wife's head, which he had intact, on that one and then just had uh, his wife with a hot body. That was the plan. See, I think he got a little too overzealous. Well, no, no, no. He, he wanted the perfect the legs hookers. and the perfect uh, boobs and the but perfect he was, hands. Right. He was, I think. Which is Frankenstein, which is what this is. I don't know if you guys have heard of Frankenstein. But it wasn't his plan because remember when they all. They all, like, he pulled out that super crack, or they pulled it out, right? And he was just like, you stupid fucking bitches. Like, yep. don't do that. And it was because he was only planning to take the one back, I thought, right? No, and no, And do what no, you were he saying. Was, he, he was going to get rid of all of them. He wanted to you think just so? take their pieces, yeah. I, don't, I, I, thought he w- I thought he was trying to find the one that had the best overall. That's what I think his initial plan was. Mm-hmm. And then he couldn't make a decision. Because there were too many different yeah, parts. Yeah, because one had me, the like, nice butt and right. one had the perfect boobs. It kind of solved itself in real time then. Because yeah. I don't, yeah, we don't know what he would have done. So he's a scientist. He makes super crack, which Fucking looks awesome. should exist. <laughs> yeah. They're humongous, like golf ball sized crystals. Rocks, yeah. And yeah, so he Heavy makes. Heavy commentary on crack on this. It's not even that bad. It's, well, this is like during the crack epidemic. Yeah. This is 90. So serious crack shit. Yeah, it's uh topical at the time. They they time. find it, they flip out cuz they love crack cuz they're ho- hookers. Who they're doesn't? Hookers. Yeah. <laughs> um and they all rip open the bag and start smoking it. That was a f- and that was an awesome scene. I mean, th- I'm I was thinking in my head in that it was just like he's writing the script like he's writing out the scene and he's like hooker 1 smokes the crack tits out <laughs> yeah it's just like that repeat times 12 yeah. and then turn on some music hooker you know? four kisses hooker so five with tits out I- if you're looking to get crack. some tit time in here guys yeah you're gonna get it okay you're gonna, uh you're gonna get uh, those yeah. tits yeah you're gonna get some fucking tits and dude uh, let's just spend a minute on that like you said the whole gamut was there oh, equal yeah. opportunity tit up op- like yeah. for everyone a no one was tits. discriminating mm-hmm Every perfect. There was like two very perfect ones. They're they're jumping you know? around. They're all playing with each other. It's a great scene. Here's here's where I I'm a little disappointed, especially with with the director because we know what he's capable of. Um, they start to smoke like their bodies start to smoke, and yeah. you can tell something's going wrong, and they can feel it, and they start to uh, explode. It was great. <laughs> the explosions were cool, but I think that's a missed opportunity for gore, which I always want gore in oh, horror movies. And I know we already said this is comedy first, horror second, but man, I love some gore. I love some goo. I love some blood. Yeah, dude. And and these explosions were very sci-fi explosions. They were smoke and well, I don't even think sparks. they were going for sci-fi. I think it was like a it the was budget was. Y- yeah, they for like, sure. We, we can only have stuff it that actually catches on fire. It was smoke and sparks, yeah. and they made actual firework sounds, yeah. like low, like <laughs> low level fireworks. You would go up to like Massachusetts yeah. to buy. They were paper it mache was, hookers. They yeah, made paper mache copies. That is the part that I was disappointed in. That I feel like could have been awesome. Goo everywhere, blood everywhere. I agree because you could have just poured jelly in it. I would have loved. Uh, this that would that would bump up my my overall rating of this, which we'll get to. 
a lot if that if they seize that goo moment. Dude, gore tits, I totally agree. You know? I was wanting that in that scene too. Doesn't like take away from it. It's still a great scene, but it's a good scene. To not in, to not just fill the fucking empty thing with jelly or I don't know anything. Just a bucket of red corn syrup. Just yeah, throw it against the wall. It's not the uh, it's yeah, it's it's not too hard to do. It did they did have like capitation and also funny decapitation where you like saw spare butts and like yeah. a whole pile of boobs yeah. like cut out um, at one point. So it, they made up for it slightly, but yeah, I mean there was a goo opportunity that was sorely missed. Uh, the the then you get into the individual body parts, which I also was disappointed in. They look like Party City, oh come Halloween on, Halloween styrofoam bits. But that's what Frank Hennenlotter does. It's like you you like he Little he's good cheap. because he Little he's good because me. he makes do with such like a low budget. He put his he, I mean they they definitely but they put their budget into I mean his garage is ridiculous. There's it was very yeah, it looked like a lab for like legit with like huge lab. moving <laughs> pieces and the the roof opens up with like a platform that goes out with a humongous sci-fi okay. antenna on it so that I'm it can get say, struck by really lightning. I was going to say, it didn't really go that high. I don't know if you really thought that. It <laughs> well, like it was probably feet like 15 air. feet in the air. Yeah, you know, it was like, but for for me personally, styrofoam bits that look like you could buy them at your local Halloween uh, store that pops up every, you know, September. I fucking hate those things, dude. The, uh, who are the are people who run those? They have to be very just, just like shameful fucking. They're just yeah. people Generates. that like. What do they buy do the rest a, of the year? They buy a truckload of Halloween shit and then they rent out some so stupid place and they An just throw abandoned sh- store. Yeah, and they just throw shit everywhere. And it's never gone like it's never changed. It's been like they've changed like they'll change their fucking tracks and they'll be like, oh, we're Halloween celebrity this year and this yeah. year we're like scary Halloween and they're the same fucking things that no, have been the there for thing. years. Um. Shout out to Party City for suffering the rest of the Dude. year, guys. <laughs> Shout out to Party, Party City. City, your family is like, we remember all your lost ones, <laughs> yeah. everyone that starved. You guys stayed true. They really, like, they have to, it's like one of those things where it's like, we only make this money in this yeah. time of the fucking yeah. year. I used yeah. to work at Party City for oh, all Oh, yeah, that's right. Me Whoa, shit. Did. So yeah. did you know any of those people? Did you ever have to deal with those people? Like, I feel like they maybe, like, come there and they're like, hey, can we, like, get deals on shit? Because we only have the fucking Halloween store, like, the entire year. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, day before Halloween, stuff like that, people would come in and want deals, but you just say no. Yeah, because like, right the day after Halloween, everything's, like, everything's useless. Yeah. They have the store <laughs> well, full of fucking bullshit that yeah. nobody wants now. It's but stupid. Party City was cool just because, well, when I worked at Party City, like, there was a mass counter, and I worked on the mass counter. You could, like, try them all on and all that kind of shit. That sounds disgusting in retrospect. <laughs> well, I didn't try them on, so it didn't matter, but... But I mean, for anyone. But yeah, don't don't. Were you were you like the bowling ball like shoe spritzer? Were you spritzer? (laughs) (laughs) Gross, sweaty guys like I don't know. Got just kind of tight around my face and my fat fucking neck, and you're like, it's okay, sir. (laughs) (laughs) You should spray in like two little. (laughs) I wish I had a spray can. We didn't even have a spray can. That was that. Anyone who's tried on a mask, you're fucking disgusting. Well, now you can't even. Now you can't even do it. Now they don't even allow you to do it. But that was like back. The only fun thing you can do at the party. Yeah. So now Party City is like the Halloween has decreased, but still shout out to Party City for holding on for so long. They are like the one. They are like they. Is there any other party place? Well, you if you Not needed a I party, anything would you even be like? I guess I just won't have a party because no, I don't they, live near a party city. Party city. I mean, it's right. It's right there in the name. They figured that out at least. Oh my god! You need party supplies? Go to Walmart. <laughs> 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 I I don't know, man. I I've I've never gone there. Maybe for like Fourth of July shit. But you've never gone to Party City for Hall- no. The only reason no, I'm saying party city. outside of Halloween. Oh yeah, there'd be no. Like, well, like we, what actually goes on in there? We went there for like our wedding, sh- like to look for wedding shit. But we didn't buy anything. Yeah, of course not. So it's just a bunch of bullshit. Like Dave's Where's your party mixes. masks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this way, sir. You have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> but even like for the rest of the year, there's still like I remember the party scene I worked at. The Halloween section doesn't move or change. It just gets blocked off. Really? So you can't even fuck you with can't access Halloween, Halloween shit? No, 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 no. They take what all if you this, want it? They take all this shit. To, well, before, now it's all just pictures on a wall. You can't touch anything. You're right. Yeah. Now, yeah that's bullshit. That now, pisses me off. Yeah. Now the aisles are just whatever. But back then. Hey, they party, were just hey, party City. Off. Suck my butt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, party City, man. What do you think you're doing, man? You think but you're so suckers. fucking cool because you're like, 
Oh, you can't come near our Halloween stuff. Yeah, man. Come look at our fucking masks. Uh, oh, hey, on the man. Wall. I got some different. We got co- pictures. Yeah. I can look at pictures on the internet. Ever heard of it? Yeah, you, you stupid dumb fucking idiots. idiots. All right. We hate so, you. So, screw off, Party City. <laughs> if you're Party City, if you're listening and you work for Party City, stop listening right now. Go to your manager and say, fuck you. Fuck you, man. I'm fucking out of here right now. I'm so sick of this shit, man. This is what happens and in you, America, man. This place People isn't even a party, party man. Yeah. Or a city. Yeah, dude. <laughs> good point. Party city is neither a city nor a party. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back so to Frankenhooker. Yeah. <laughs> man, let's get back to Frank- So, today. okay. But anyway, yeah, there was that was an awesome scene. I agree it could have benefited from the gore. But we were treated to... Okay, so there were some effects later, very Henenlotter effects later. Right. And there was some good. After th- after he blows up the fucking stupid prostitutes, then he begins to build Frankenhooker. And to what you were saying before, this happens with she comes to life with about half an hour left in the movie. Yeah. yeah it's I say you should have split that or like I would say first 10 15 is strong, then like a kind of middling kind of whatever middle like sub middle act, and then but then you have like forty five minutes of the second half good because it's in New York finding shit and and dealing with the stupid hookers and then and, and the sleaze ton- bar yeah oh so yeah in the in the part where he's looking for the hookers that's when you get like the full breath of just like New York sleaze in that era it was just like in the dirtiest actual like forty second Street that's where they all mm-hmm. fucking were you know yeah if you're gonna show New York I want my late eighties early nineties sleaze I want shit in the streets I want bums yelling which they, they did have were. a bum oh, yeah. yelling <laughs> it was, it was bum. funny breakout star um I want hookers everywhere I want got him I want uh, cops roaming around with with ink I want them to look displeased oh yeah Co- well cops back then were just like oh my god i hope i don't have to do anything today yeah. it's like i want them mustachioed um i there, want there uh, were no cops in this right there, there were no, no cops nope. yep um they did have some pimps yeah that was good um, tough ass fucking pimp dude dude it's fucking jacked. you know what if you're gonna go through new york though in 1990 i want to see some punks man i want to see some break dancers <laughs> Well, you can't, dude. This is like what you did for the other one. Where I you know. Just want every you, movie to want be the warrior. Yes. Ears connected to noses. <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah. I mean, they could have. There was a, the scene where she was in the subway. The scene where she was in the subway. They they could have thrown a break dancer in there or a punk in the subway. Yeah, I would have. I would have give you that. But the rest of it. I, don't I mean, there was a biker oh. bar. They had like they the had bar was pimps, cool. Bikers, dirty, just degenerate people. Crazy like transvestite. All I'm like, saying is very, when you show very dirty. When you show New York City, I want, especially at that time, obviously not now. I want to see it. I want to see I mean, the I danger. I want to see it now. I want to see the danger. I want to see the fear. I want to see the grime. I don't think and the grit. And they, he did a pretty good job. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think you'd go into the building that. No, that was a shitty fucking, building. Like, it was yeah. fucking scary. I mean, shit. it was still. F- this was still had that funny, lighthearted, you know, tone to it. So. Yeah. Yeah, there could there if there was a punk or a or a it'd be a funny punk like it wouldn't be like or just like a side punk you know what I yeah, mean yeah w- you wouldn't there was get no, that in this he was never gonna no, give you that there was no date like Jeffrey was just hanging out in his fucking Oldsmobile driving around yeah. <laughs> like never just left the car yeah, running just, like, just oh, like have you wow. seen my dead my dead wife have oh, you seen her she's purple you got the tits oh okay I have the money yeah or like <laughs> oh yeah oh you you with the tits come here. Like there was no, he was never in any danger. Where that dude would have got killed, oh, in, yeah. like Jersey straight up. Boy. Yeah, Jersey boy, Jersey died. boy in here. Hey, oh, Frankie, hello, <laughs> Jersey boy over here. Hey, Jersey boy, mm. what are you looking to do there, you know? <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they fuck with him a little bit. You they know, did. The, I the thought pimp. it was good. Well, the pimp was just like, "What are you doing, man? Why are you wearing those clothes? What happened to those girls?" That he was like more concerned about the he dead starts hookers. The, he kind of so so uh, yeah, the hookers die. He goes back into New York City, and no, I'm missing a part. The hookers well, die. He makes he makes Frank Frank and Hooker. Yes, she awakens after the il- fucks him up. Yep, yep. She s- smacks him out of the way, and he realizes quickly that her brain has changed. It's not really his wife. It's like the personality of all of the hookers combined. What's that other movie that did that? Isn't there something like that where it's like someone had a part of someone else and it was just like or that's like a common thing right where it's just like oh, oh yeah I have that's a like transplant a tr- of like a monkey heart and now it's like, like a monkey yeah 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 yeah. 
So isn't that, s- that that what the fuck was that stupid Rob Schneider? Yeah, yeah. Dear Schneider. I, that's all I think. Yeah, <laughs> Rob when, Schneider had movie one jillion movies made, and all I think of now when I hear his name is Rob Schneider. Yeah. <laughs> Rob <laughs> Schneider movie is he was never in the carrot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the only way that you know that they have the personalities of these hookers, though, is that they're just repeating lines that they said like a couple hours before. Yeah, yeah. Well, How else not, would dude, you know? I mean, you're. It's not the Warriors and it's not the Godfather. I, I don't know. I want, well, I, want I don't it to know be what both you want. Of those combined. Like so. it was, I it was yeah. It kind of like cut fast as soon as she became uh, Frankenhooker. It was kind of like, well, we got to find like a thing for her to go, which I didn't. I, I never expected it. Kind of taking it to the end, but yeah, I mean, she fucked a few guys. Saw some fucking dudes blow up, which was fucking really cool. I thought that was a cool like. Yeah, so she goes to New York City. From New Jersey, mm-hmm. she f- quickly she's going around asking people if they want to, to date, fuck. if they want to fuck, if if they have yeah, money. Yeah, she's in hooker mode. She's in hooker mode. She brings them to that same shitty hotel. She 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 bangs one guy, a funny fat old guy who is super psyched yeah. to get boned. Uh, you could tell like this bitch has different colored everything, and I actually thought she was pretty hot with like her yeah. purple hair and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was just like, "Oh God, I'm going to like get it," and he was oh. super excited. <laughs> oh, mama, thank every, you. Yeah, every fat, sweaty guy who you've ever seen like look up and mouth thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was that guy. <laughs> he is the that patron guy saint of those has, guys. Who has never fucked in like decades, and now this bitch is just like, "Want a date?" and just gonna fuck him. And she's pretty hot, so yeah, I, she's I get hot. Why he did that? That introduced one of the cooler effects, I thought, which is one of our favorite types of 80s effects, the drawn lightning. Mm. And they purpleized it in this. Mm -hmm. And I won't give too much away, but like, if you fuck her, you're going to have a bad time. Put it that way. Well, you're going to have a great time before you have a bad time. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody she comes in contact with, no matter if it's the sleaze guy in the hallway or the sleaze guy at the bar or the sleaze guy (laughs) on the street, anybody who touches her in any sort of physical way... Uh, besides just, you know, with their mouths, ends up... Uh, yeah, she yeah so if, you she have a, if you touch a wet orifice or if she touches your wet orifice... I feel like, yeah, if there's any any sexual type of contact with her, yeah. that's when you're going to get some electricity through, through your body dick. and you're going to explode. You're going to blow, blow your dick up. off. You're going to blow the fuck up. But again, missed gore opportunity for me. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, there was a good, like, a... Uh, for for people out there who like watch quick cuts like a cue the blank that was a good oh, where yeah. some guy blows up it's like cue the head and then Tom on the oh, side and of, they just Tom out it. of the shot they're like throw the head he had to throw <laughs> it and it's just like fuck all right they they paid for one pane of breakable glass to yeah. throw the head through it was good that was funny so we're 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 approaching the end of the movie here yeah I th- and then so she's on her hijinks in New York fucking around fucking people up Jeffrey's got to find her. And some fucked up shit happens. I mean, I don't want to give away the end too much, but the end is where you get a lot of, like, if you're a fan of Frank Hennenlotter and his his it aesthetic, gets, it's very cool. It gets very Basket Casey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A yeah. lot. Of, if you like the design and, like, puppetry of Basket Case, it pays off in the last, like, what, ten minutes? Yeah. Sh- yeah, do you, I mean, do you want to? We've spoiled the rest of this movie. No, know? no. I mean, the, this. We'll I, won't something spo- I won't spoil it in terms of what it looks like, but you'll get that Hennenlotter payoff. Yeah. In the end. There's some goo. That he, he you get some goo in the last like 10 15 minutes and you know, there's a twist. Weird mutant puppet tree. Yeah. yeah. Almost like Cronenberg. Yeah, a yeah. little Cronen mm-hmm. Cronenesque. Yeah, Cronen-esque. Oh, a little Carpenter-esque too, a little thingy. Ooh. Yeah. yeah was a little, there was little some thingy. there was some uh the thing thrown there. in there yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. But they're good. They're good. But it's from a, a com- more a comedic silly uh Point of view, Frank Henelotter, yeah. yeah, style. So it's a good, it's a good climax. It wraps up pretty tightly, and then after the climax, there's like an extra climax, which is just kind of like, I thought it was okay. I'd, yeah, I like a weird I, final note. To the end true that was ending. like a, hey, dude, you're a page short on this script. <laughs> like, yeah. what, what do you want to do? Yeah, you and came in like, at eighty eight minutes. We need ninety. Yeah. He's like, ah, uh, look over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just started filming, but. You know, I mean, that was a huge thing in the 80s and into the 90s. The final scene, like, whoa, look what we did here. Yeah, yeah. They love that shit. I I back it. I mean, it wasn't you great. know, like It wasn't the worst, the, but it was fine. You have it was good. whatever movie, it was okay. the standard, it was bad. any horror movie, you know, the guy goes through the whole thing, defeats all the monsters, 
and then and then oh it's all good we're back to normal i got my babe back everything will be fine and then the last five seconds you know you Fuck get no, bro. the turnaround and and the someone's a demon or the yeah shredder, exactly the shredder hand that was huge oh, dude, exactly yeah that was huge. but the shredder hand no was not the, short-lived no in the first one do, when, uh, like, when he's uh, in the garbage disposal and then he still moves right that's yeah, true. but I just thought that but, meant but that he was getting But that sets up for crushed. a sequel, and that's okay. This is like, hey, we but finished the movie, and this is like... But that's the thing. They're all trying to set up for a sequel. Cause yeah, this no is one's going to not this take is the, the money. Because this is the 80s, and if you fuck it, we're going for a sequel. Oh, I guess that's what it was then. So, I wouldn't have been mad. I mean, there's three basket cases, so... Yeah, I mean, uh, all I, in all, I think I like basket case a little better. Well, basket case was more of a horror and that's also I was First. gonna say like you could see Basket Case was eighty early eighties right yeah. yeah early like eighty three eighty four then there was a fair break and then three is actually after this three I think is ninety three and comparing the third Basket Case which we've never really watched yeah we tried we've tried to watch some of it and. Compared to the first, he definitely started as like horror. Yeah, because yeah. Basket Case is like ki- is more way more horror. It's more horror, horror with with uh, comedic elements, and then he slowly moved into the world of comedy first with horror elements and brain damage, which you haven't seen, which we no. definitely should watch. Yeah. That is like that is like probably his like best blend of the. two. I would say know? it's the best mix of horror yeah. and comedy. Right. Yeah. So um. Ratings? Oh, yeah, ratings. Ratings. Should what we do we? it in tits? Uh, Frank and tits? Fr- Frank and tits? Frank and tits. Okay. okay. I'm going to give this one 8 out of 10 Frank and tits. Wow. I'm doing this, and I'll, mm. I'll be very clear. I love Frank Hendenlotter movies. Um, I think, especially after having such a you know bad taste left in our mouth from My Demon Lover, this was... It, Demon Lover could have looked at this and been like, this is how you do horror comedy, you know? Even if it doesn't give you everything you wanted, and even if it's not the Warriors, it's still pretty good. And it has enough gore, plenty of tits. It's gonna fill that fucking you know thing up with blood right away. And oh yeah, <laughs> and it's gonna it's gonna give you what you want. Horror comedy, eight out of ten would recommend. Eight out of ten Franken tits. I'm gonna go for a seven Franken tits. Maybe seven and a half, maybe a little tit on the side, just a little okay. extra tit. Um, definitely a good movie, definitely funny, definitely enjoyed watching it. Um, but yeah, there's the faults are it a little, you know, a little much when you things like Basket Case and things like Brain Damage. Definitely would watch Brain Damage over Frank and Hooker. But I think Frank and Hooker, if you're into any sort of you know B movie experience, Frank Frank and Hooker is a must watch. Yeah, it's it's a must watch. You got to put horror that on comedy your, for yeah. sure. I mean, if Bill Murray says it's good, yeah, which he did, it's good. Quote him. So definitely seven seven and a half Frank and Tits. So let me see this. Here's where I am. Bill Murray. If you only see one movie this year, it should be Frank and Hooker. He said that. Yeah. Allegedly. No, he um, did. No, I'm sure he did. It's in the archives. Uh, Bill, bud. You're spending a little too much time in that GB2 goo, okay? Because uh, this is not the one movie I would see from What else came out in 1990 that you should see? I Warriors, dude. I don't remember off the top of my head. You could watch the Warriors again. Was Total Recall 90? Because mm. right, Total checking, Recall uh, fucks this but dude, movie But, dude, you up. can't. Well, All yeah. right, but I'm just saying. He's saying if you're going to see one movie. Well, I'm just not one to. Uh, anyway, Bill. Total Recall was to 1990. Bill, I love you, man, but I'm going to give this movie. Six and a half Franken tits. Okay, that's respectable. Um, respectable. I, if it wasn't for all of the bobbers in this movie, Wait, there were plenty, dude. There you were. You got your there fill. Were, I got my fill. There were Mondo there Yobs. Was, there was literally a bucket of bobbers. Yeah, yeah there, there was, was a genuine like pile yeah. of tits. <laughs> yep. Um, I would probably give it like a five and a half if it wasn't for that. If it wasn't for the tits. Yeah, because so there were babes in this movie. Um, I don't think the humor was great. Like I chuckled, but I didn't like genuinely like really laugh that many times. And it definitely is a comedy first. Yeah. So if if we're going in for for that, if you're gonna do a comedy with horror elements, I do want to laugh. And I chuckled. It's it's more like fun and silly than it is. Uh, I could have done with more gore. But for what it is, it's a fun movie. I would recommend it. I do think you should see it if you like bad movies. <laughs> That's a no, lie. No, 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 no. I, I, I am <laughs> That's lying. That's a lie. It, 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 it's pretty good. That's why we're here. Ah, oh, dude, it's good. So, wait, six out of five, Frank and Tits. Yeah, uh, 6. yeah. 6.5. 6.5. So is it one extra tit or half of a tit? It's like a small tit. 
like an Im- a diseased. Yeah, no, like no, no. Hand, it's like a, one it's a, tit is bigger well, than the other tit. Every is that what you're saying? Or are we talking about pairs? We're of We're talking tits? pairs. Pairs. So if you're giving a half, I'm are you total a... recalling one? She oh. and, but opposite of total recall. She only has one tit. She only has one tit. Yeah. So okay, single in the tit. middle. <laughs> 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 I think that's way better and way more attractive. Yeah. All right. Well. I, tit. I agree, everyone. Uh, maybe we should move on to the snack portion of this. Snack time. Snack time. How about, I had an idea. You want to create a, someone uh, Someone creates a snack jingle on the spot every time? Yeah, I like that. Okay. I like that idea. Do you want me to go first or you? Um, you go. It was your idea. You go. All right. Yeah. All right, so let's see. <clears throat> it's snack time now. You're going to eat some snacks. Get home right now and eat some snacks because they're good with sugar. Wow. That was, that was good. That was Pretty good. <laughs> Applause for this. That's what I would say. If, if it, it wasn't, wasn't terrible. Stupid. Hey, man, you come up with a better one. <laughs> All right. Next time. But yeah, next, next time. time. No, he's <laughs> gonna pl- he's gonna plot it and oh, write it yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Now this guy his has his yeah. like gonna fucking call in R. Kelly and just, <laughs> <laughs> and just fucking sculpt snacks the in my so we're all, we're all, Hold on, hold on. We're getting whoa, into the wrapper. Whoa, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, look at the box. Let's get into the the box because that's where all the magic is. What we're reviewing today are Rice Krispies treats, new flavor cookies and cream. Uh, this is the store bought Rice Krispies treat. So different than what you'll get at home or at some like weird cafeteria stand. And let's just start off by acknowledging that there are varying levels in the wild of Rice Krispies treats, and anyone feels like they have the right to make them. And you can even make them without Rice Krispies. So like, where do you guys stand on the store bought version of Rice Krispies? I am not a fan of the store bought version at all. I'm, I mean, I will eat them, but it's every time I'm like, man, I'm I'm in the snack aisle, and I'm like, man, I just want a snack. I just want something good, but I don't want chips. I don't want candy. Oh, Rice Krispie treats, okay. And then I op- pop it open, and I'm just like, it's not that good. But mm. homemade Rice Krispie treats, those are fucking good. I'm with Vinny on this. Homemade, hands down, all forever, over. That is a delicious childhood treat in my brain. Um, the The packaged ones decent i'll eat them like yeah. i sh- certainly enjoyed them more when i was younger but um not my favorite that's what i was gonna say too these had heavy fucking rotation in my like school lunches so the like the if anything i'm just like used to it and my family wasn't like big at home rice krispies treats people so if i was having these it was most likely this but i wanted to but that's why i was getting at before because you're saying homemade and i feel like homemade has levels because homemade can be at a school cafeteria or homemade can be at like a rest stop or something. And I've certainly had someone's like rest amateur. Stop. Yeah. Where are you buying? No, no, no. You mean like, no, a, like a, no, like like a, a trucker no, stop? No, 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 no. When uh, they have hey, like the fresh bag. Boy, get over here. Try, try <laughs> these uh, Rice <laughs> Krispie treats. I made them in the back of my hey, truck. Hey, how yeah. do you, what do you make them out of? Uh, you don't worry about that. You're just going to buy one. Well, eat it. How did you hold on one second? So you have Rice Krispie treats in the back of yeah, your truck? Yeah, in the back of my truck. Yeah, I said it. Yep. In the back of the van. Yeah. What, what are you cooking them with? Yeah, listen, boy, you're not going to worry about that, okay? You're going to come back here, you're going to eat one, you're going to like it, okay? Dad, I want one of the treats in the van. Oh, hold the, sh- shut the fuck up for a second. I want one of the van Th- treats. Hey, shut up. This man is saying he has them, and I just want to make sure you're safe. Protect your little virgin ass. We're d- <laughs> 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 that, anytime you say virgin ass, that's it. The sketch is over. Yeah, virgin ass. Sorry, we'll break with that. Um, So I was saying, yeah, I, I like the store-bought ones. And I think that there, I've had people who've made them where I've just been like, you've either used a substandard marshmallow, you don't know how to fucking make them, I know it's like a three-step process and you fuck around, or you fuck around and you try to use like crisped rice or some other like store-bought style bullshit. Dude, I, I see, know I've, no, you'll, you'll not tell me that I've not tasted subpar rice You're crisps. talking about when you go to like a bake sale. Yeah, exactly. And some grandma, the one lady that doesn't really bake. Yeah, because it's and not And doesn't baking, know dude. how it's to do baking. shit. You have had so many issues in your life with rice crisps. I mean, because I've been in the <laughs> snack game for my entire dude, fucking life. Dude, I have got a lot had of snack. He's got a lot of rice snack. Rice crispy you know, treats. Snack, snack wounds that need to be healed. All kinds of you know, parties and, and bake sales in elementary school where it's like that, you know, the Christmas party, everybody's supposed to bring. They're and very, some of things bullshit. Sometimes, but they're very rarely bad. I mean, they're very easy to make. If somebody and made always, it, it's always, it's instantly going to be better than I agree. Of these. That is what I would well, Even I if it's with. a bake sale one, but I will say, since you were, you didn't grow up in a Rice Krispie Treats household, yeah. fresh out the oven, 
Yeah. That's the way to eat a Rice Krispie treat. That's like, I guess. I That's get how you do it. Because the it's rice like, is still crisp and the... the well, you got to let them cool. You can't just... Well, it's just that, like... No. Molten, no. Dude, it's just like m- molten hot... Seven degree burns in my Marshmallow mouth, lava on your hands. Well, I mean, hey, man, he's a fucking wild man. Yeah. That's the only way I eat him. That's actually... That just made me think of something like, is that... Is, can someone do that as like a raclette thing for dessert? Because that would be fucking cool if like what? someone comes... <laughs> <laughs> No, dude, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> the, you know raclette. No. no. The cheese thing raclette. No. Yes, what? you do. It's I, all over fucking everywhere. It's when they take that hot steaming cheese and they scrape it off the thing. I didn't know that had a... It's a stupid name. It means cheese in stupid, right, like, Frenchy or whatever. That. It does not mean it in French. No, <laughs> it, dude, I know it means a certain uh, type of cheese. Okay, so Never I didn't know that. <laughs> Never heard but, it. but you know what I, I'm talking about. I do know about. what you're talking about, yes. And that would and that be cool delicious. on a dessert. With fresh Rice Krispies treat, yeah, like on ice cream or something, for sure, right? Like a marshmallow, like a marshmallow rice and goo. Cheese? No, taking f- <laughs> taking the fresh Rice Krispies hot and, and gooing it onto, it onto a... your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you watch oh, it come okay. out all gooey, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I'd be down like every that. other fucking retard is because it's hot cheese. I'd yeah. be down with that. Hot yeah. cheese is delicious though. So, sh- but it's not like. So, so these in particular, just by judging by the the uh, picture on the box, don't think they're going to be great. No. Okay, so okay, so now we're we've established where we all stand on regular Rice Krispies treats and compared to store bought and non flavored. So, this cookies and cream flavor, uh, you want to? We'll open the packages now. We'll examine first. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're going to open the individual packages now. Yeah, it's definitely not going to look like the box. Tell you that right now. I mean, first of all, it's nothing like the box. It's already so thin and dinky. I want like a thick. Yeah, but not of a store bought. Not of, not of. I mean, I'm sorry. Not of a, yeah. yeah not of a store bought one. I mean, are, are these the are better. like mini versions or something. Yeah, these are like these are like Mike's. Right, these are like fine. you put them in your. Line. I also well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think this also may be different than just regular ones, unless I'm remembering with like my child size hands how big they. No, used they to were be. bigger. For they sure. used to be thicker and thicker bigger and than bigger. regular. Yes, regular, that, and that's what right? I wanted. Okay, I didn't expect them to be this shape small and either. size wise. That's what I wanted. See, these are about the size of like what, like a. Fucking like a match- old phone battery or something like I don't yeah, I don't what know what would you call this uh, like a matchbook where you slide the the matches out yeah you like know? a mini cassette that you would put in a yeah in a uh, those are yeah, all good uh, those things. answering machine <laughs> yeah that <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing yeah. it is an answering machine sized cassette uh, and then yeah compared to the box so we have so we have the the rice krispie square we have a f- layer of frosting on the bottom of white frosting white frosting drizzle on the top. And cookie crumbs on the top. Now, compared to the box, they advertise this as having like, I'd say the order of magnitude of these chunks is what, like five times bigger. Yeah, yeah. these are fucking tiny dustings this is of dust. chocolate. This is it's chocolate. dust, and dust. it's dude. You said layer of cream at the bottom. Coating. It is a paper thin <laughs> bullshit of a <laughs> ass at the bottom. <laughs> it is. Well, dude, I'm just saying it, it's it's not Looking. it's not the top, and it's not not coated. No, I want well, compare more, yours to mine. Is w- ours the same? No, it's all the same. I want more. Cream. Okay, they just dabbed it. They just dab. They just did a quick dab. Yeah. yeah, it was a machine that went. Yeah, quick Boop. little dip. It went. Beep, beep, beep. Get in there. Yeah. Come. Well, to that point, I am glad this is not a big giant. Because I can already tell. I want a thick and I can juicy. Tell it's drier. Yeah, but not it's these. It's dry already. This, just looking at it, it is dry. I want these it juicy dry. like a steak. Like smell. All right, let's go to the smell. Yeah, smell. smell. I st- all I smell is I chemical. smell cookie. I smell bleh. chemical cookies. Chemical yeah, it cookies. smells like what I would. Ex- you know what it smells like? Like a, any Oreo flavored knockoff. Knockoff. Yeah, because yeah, it's like that ch- fake. Not. I mean, not. It smells cookie. like an, like a like if you get like an Oreo like whey protein like a cookies yeah. It and smells cream. like protein. Yeah. you're right. Holy shit. Which is not appetizing to me. Yeah. I want to eat a delicious but snack. If you, I actually, that's a perfect comparison. If you've ever had a chocolate and or cookies and cream protein, yeah, that's what this it is like. the this is the yeah. pr- flavor profile. All right, um, all right. So yeah, not promising from the box, lying to us from the box. Filthy not, liars. Yeah, filthy liars. Dirty whore liars. And, and we're f- we're friendly with whores, but this is not like no. not this kind of lying whore. And it's not looking good so far. Um, should we go in for a bite? Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, it's delicious. Dude, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> we are going to, all right, hold on. Still not a fan. Well, here's what I can say. Better than a, better than a straight up 
Reg's Rice Krispie Treat packaged because at least they got that frosting shit on it to kind of like ease it down your, your gullet. Oh, yeah. But it's still dry and like dense as fuck. It's, here's what I'll say. It is not the flavor you smell. It is a stronger cookies and cream profile than the smell would incline, right? Do you really think so? Stronger? Well, it doesn't, like, when I'm eating this now, even when I get some bits of the cookie, it's mostly the cream. It's mostly cream. But when I'm getting the cookie, it, d- it doesn't taste like that gross Hydrox, like fake Oreo. It's just like a different kind of chocolate. There's not enough cookie in there to even call it cookies and cream for me. That's fair. Um, But as, like... If I was like blindfolded and you just fed this to me and said eat this treat, Thanks. I would go. It's good. Yeah, because yeah, I would say if you gave this to me, I don't know if I would immediately be like. I guess I would be like Rice Krispie treat, but it's not. It's like, more like a candy Rice Krispie or a candy. It's a little so- sweeter than your regular Rice Krispie treat. Um, it is the same consistency as a as your. Your Kellogg's Blue Box Rice Krispie yeah, it's, treat. It's still got yeah, that that, that. store bought denseness. Which to which it. we've already, which I will say forever, we've already agreed. Homemade, homemade's better, way better. But for th- for what it is, yeah. good enough for me to open my second one and <laughs> eat that. Go that is that. that's where the size does come in handy. Yeah, because you can be that's like, what I'm saying. fuck, man, I don't got to feel bad about eating two. They're fucking the size of you know a tiny dick. But I think also if it was just like a big. Well, hold on, this is a tiny dick. It's this a, is it's a minuscule dick. Well, hold on. I'm gonna mean. This I'm is a, like I think I'm pretty average, and this is only a little bit bigger. So I can, yeah. And I'm but I'm. This has got to be at least two inches. <laughs> two pretty. Two and a half. Yeah. Hard, very hard inches. Yeah. Two gooey inches. Two creamy cookie inches. I'd say this. This is a good pin size. Yeah. You want like a nice portrait pin? Um, yeah. I mean, there's very little cookie. You get it's an aftertaste. mostly cream, I would say. I feel like you get a little cookie aftertaste after you would put... What is the cream, though? Because I'm having a hard time pinning it down. I've tasted it before. This is like that cereal bar. You ever had like a cereal bar? Yep. With like the milk on the bottom? Like a... F- like a the cream. Golden Graham? Or, yeah, it's literally just cream icing. It's just icing. super sweet icing. Yeah. But it's not cream icing. I feel like no. it's just like there icing that's on like there is no cream in there. It's, yeah. just, it's just... Sugar. Sugar icing. Not frosting. Nope. Icing. It's not terrible, man. I don't. It's not I terrible. Don't mind it that much. It's not terrible at all. I didn't finish my first one. You didn't finish no? it first? No, I'm not. I'm That's silly. I'm not into it. Why I mean, I don't that? think it's great, but I just don't. This, it's good. These like hit a. This is like maybe my. This is. Oh, my, dude, open it up, dude. I, yeah, like, this please. is my. Just spill your guts, man. Let's hear where the fucking doll. Cherry cola, <laughs> <laughs> Oreo. I just. They just like if I eat too much of it, it just makes me feel gross. Like it's just instant. Just sugar, blah, like blah, blah, like that noise. My my body just goes, blah, 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 and I just don't want it anymore. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a fair amount of not, but I d- ingredients in here, so I get that. But like what you said, like when I was a kid, oh, hell yeah, hell yeah, I would eat like three or four of these. But now, I think if you're no. gonna get someone who ate them as a kid to eat them as an adult, this is probably what you'll have to do. Because if this if this didn't have the cream on it, I could almost see it being like, I would don't want to eat it because it's flavorless. Yeah, like it's very this only this isn't too sweet for me, and it's coated in cream. You know. Yeah, so. it's a lot. It's a lot of like that for me. It's a lot of that cream stuff, that fake milk cream. I appreciate its size, but besides that, and then I also I will appreciate the not as disgusting as it smelt. Like I thought it was gonna taste worse. It smelled way worse than it. Did. And then I ate it. I'm like, okay, this is this is manageable, but still not going back for like a third bite. All right, I uh, I would never walk down the aisle and pick this as a snack. It's not appealing to me. Like it doesn't look appealing. It doesn't. What have you ever bought Rice Krispies treats though? Because yeah. I haven't even. Well, I like haven't either. I picked this up because it said new, and I was like, Yeah, I mean, I a new I, flavor in a fucking. For sure, when like I was a in gas station, like the, they have like the bigger bars where they're like, Oh, this is all chocolate, or this is whatever of Rice Krispies. Of Rice Krispies. Yeah. Like when I was younger, my mom would get these and put Dan's these. Dan's going in for his third. No, I'm not going to eat it. Oh, I'm just okay. going to look at <laughs> it. Um, she would buy these, and they were they were the bigger version. Yeah, they were a little bigger, like, and they were square or whatever. Um. And I I liked these. Yeah. Growing up, uh, 
I, now, like, these don't look appealing to me. Even looking at the picture, having just eaten two of them, and I know that they taste pretty good, um, I still wouldn't want to buy these. There is plenty of snacks that I had as a kid that would be considered, like, younger snacks oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, I yeah. still want, and these are not one of them, but I like them. I think they're pretty good. I thought they weren't bad. I mean, and that's why I asked, because I have i don't even remember the last time I bought a Rice Krispie Treat for, like, actual American money, but this is just like, hey, new cookies and cream, you know, you're really putting yourself out there with, like, a classic flavor like that. To think that they hadn't really taken their step with that, I was kind of surprised with. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's like, it's okay, but there's, I feel like there's a ceiling on Rice Krispies treats anyway. How good can the best Rice Krispie treat be? If it's not a homemade one, it's very or even in Even in general. Even like in a home- in the I think you can get a really good it's homemade good one. one. I mean, it's all about, just like, it's all about ingredients. It's all about timing, like when you eat it. Because even a homemade Rice Krispie treat, like a week old, isn't very good. Like you have to give the stale. edge to these and that. Rice Krispie Treats homemade ones don't stay better, don't stay good for like more than a day, I feel like. Like a couple, you get a couple, couple days, days. But no, but I mean, yeah. no real food stays good for more than a few days. This is uh, packaged you're right. <laughs> garbage. Like, yeah. you know, this is. What's the expiry date? Never. It's like 2020. Yep. Oh, hold on. Is it? Oh, I know. I'm sorry. It was just a number. I thought it said 2025. And I was just like, I, that's I mean, amazing. that wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't it's surprise not... me. Either. But this year, December of this year, that's still a pretty long time. Uh, all right. You want uh, ratings? ratings? Ratings, sure. You want to go first, Vinny? Sure. What's uh, what scale are we working with on we're these? St- we're s- I thought we're still uh, we still working on Frank, Frank and, and Should we what? switch it up? Eyeball brains. Frank and, Frank and ass. Frank and butts. Frank and butts. Oh, what are the name of those pants? Zubaz. Zubaz <laughs> pants. <laughs> that the pimp was wearing. I like Frank and butts. Frank and butts. All right. I'm gonna give this three Frank and butts. It's not as bad as like the Guinness chips, but still never really been a fave of mine. Store bought Rice Krispie treats, and these ones are just a little too sweet for me. And the 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 cookie of the cookies and cream, not cookies and cookies and cream, falls short. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a. My initial thought. Maybe I'm thinking about it too much. I'm gonna give it a five and a half, Franken butts. I think that's fine because I are, make sure you're not pick, like you're not trying to scale it against something. No, no, no. no. It's no, just no, its no, own no, no. thing. I would eat it um, if someone gave. If it was the only thing around, I wouldn't say no. I'm, I'm not gonna eat that. It's, yeah, it's pretty tasty. I would never choose to buy these um, at this point in my life, but Fuck not me. terrible. And and I would now like some delicious homemade. Rice Krispie treats. Oh, you know when they make them with cereals that aren't Rice Krispies? Well, yeah, dude. Well, that's what they whole started with, like he was saying with that like fruity that bar pebbles, shit, right? Yeah, like the whole milk bar thing. Well, that's what they tried to do. They tried to cop the old lady bake sale. Like dude, we gotta get into this muscle market. Them out of the market. Yeah, yeah, we gotta get into this market, dude. Hey, Tommy. So but your see, mom was making a little uh, extra money on the side. <laughs> there. We're gonna have to put a fucking stop to, to we're that. Have to <laughs> take yeah. that money. We're gonna take those braces off. But your those, feet, um, Tommy. your wife. Can she, she can do those things for us, right? She can, she, right? She she can, can bake them. Things. She can bake those things. Dude, my my all-time faves are I'm a Cocoa Krispies guy. I like those. In general. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite cereal. Okay. Hands down. Never been a fruity cereal guy. But Cocoa Krispies treats? That's yeah. like upper Wait, level. Wait, Cocoa level. Krispies? With a monkey. That is chocolate rice crisps. Yeah, yeah. just chocolate rice krispies. That's like third in chocolate, right? Because I actually don't even know. I don't think I know what that tastes like. Right. I think my only flavor chocolate good. reference is Cocoa Pebbles and Cocoa All right. Puffs. So we're going to break this down real quick. <laughs> cocoa Pebbles, not as chocolatey. Uh huh. And they have that flatter pebble cons- like shape, yeah, yeah. so they get soggy real fast. Okay. Never been a Pebbles fan. Mm. I like them. Puffs have a totally different chocolate taste that's yeah. like apples to oranges yeah those are like chocolate kicks yeah which i think the reese's the chocolate and the those reese's cereal is better than just regular cocoa Puffs. see we gotta I have agree that's a that. showdown i want to do we gotta have s- no s- oh, go ahead no yeah, i was just gonna say i mean we gotta have in my opinion multiple cereal episodes i love cereal a cereal cereal is a snack for sure if yeah. you don't fucking think cereal is a snack cereal is like, one oh, of my dude. favorite yeah. snacks yeah dude when you're just hungry and you're just like when That's like a hungry. meal when in you want itself. when you yeah. want six bowls of something, <laughs> <laughs> you go to cereal. Yeah. It is the only thing you could eat multiple bowls of. This I guess is I infinite bowls. Yeah. But yeah, see, I, I was actually going to say 
I want to let's do that showdown then because I remember when Reese's came out. It came out in our lifetime. It wasn't. It didn't exist. You know, it was in the forever. 90s. It was yeah. It, was, it came out in the nineties, and I was anticipating that being cocoa puffs mixed with peanut butter crunch, which is to me the ultimate peanut butter flavor. I will in agree cereal. with that. That is and the when, best peanut and butter all cereal. they did was recreate. They created their own profile, and it doesn't even taste like Reese's. I thought. I was just like, I, th- I, mean, I think they're great. They're great. We'll they're do it. We'll good. do it. But, but I remember as a kid loving fucking peanut butter. Puffs. Peanut butter crunch is a fucking peanut butter shit, crunch. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Peanut butter crunch was like the so fucking jam. Let's get to your ratings. Oh, ratings. Right. Yeah. Ratings for this for the Rice Krispies treat. Uh, I'll probably go the same five, maybe. Yeah, five, because it doesn't do anything for me. I'll never pick it up again. Right. Add a Franken butter too if you are a fan of these. Add a Franken butter too if you like sweeter things it's more on the sweet side but it wasn't offensive it but this store-bought rice crispy its ceiling is pretty low man it's it's very dry it doesn't have any crispness to it at all no no so like, it had some crisp dog I, th- I feel like it's like it's not crisp it's like when you bite up. into it yeah it's, it's like it's very gummed up it's not like, like, it, like i would like imagine hot the things like still are crisped up. Like this oh, shoes. Yeah. I've never. I'm yeah. not biting into. I don't. This I don't mind the consistency. I like the consistency. I don't mind it, but I just think like I would bet a real one is crunchy. With a right? real like one, you, you don't hear any crunch in these. The real ones are lighter, so when you bite into them, it's like you still get all that marshmallow. And well, the real ones flavor. are also sticky because it's actually just melted marshmallow. Well, I mean, even if you wait a day, like even if you wait a day when it's not as sticky, uh huh, it's still a lighter. Chew. Yeah, well, this, this is, is really like dense. this is almost granola chewy, like a fucking. Let's not get carried away here. Like, <laughs> but it's chewy as fuck. It is chewy. It's certainly chewier than. It's like chewing it's on the a Franken chewiest. Butt. I would imagine if you were to rank them, rank order them, this has very high chewability of like all Rice Krispies treats. Probably the highest in like how chewy it is. With the in not in a not it, a good yeah. way. In a not good way. Yeah, I would agree. So yeah, five uh, five Franken butts. All right. Well. Everyone, final thoughts? Frank and Hooker's good. Watch it. Don't pay a lot for it. Don't eat Rice Krispie Treats unless your mom or your wife makes them. Um, Kellogg's, you are making a decent snack that I will never eat again. <laughs> I, I think that's fair. Uh, go ahead and do watch Frank and Hooker. If you're bored and you don't have a wife and you're just a lonely fucking shut-in, I guess go ahead and get some of these. Otherwise, steer clear. And have, you know, your mom. I think they're probably best made by your mom. Yeah. Grandmother. Right. You also, want a mom yeah. on these. On There's going to be this, some special shit in there. On this duty. But that wraps it up for this episode of the Movie Snack Podcast. Thank you for listening, everyone. And we will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it, everyone. The first episode of the Movie Snack Podcast is in the books. And to anyone who's hearing this right now, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, please like and subscribe. You can find us on social media at The Movie Snack on Instagram. And if you have any movie suggestions that you'd like us to review or snacks you'd want us to try, email us at themoviesnack at gmail.com. Thank you for tuning in.